Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and, uh, you know, I'm really busy today. Uh, <laughs> sorry, man, I can't attend your birthday. Happy... That's all you get. Uh, it's Keelan's birthday. Uh, uh, congratulations. How old are you? 22. 22, I knew that. Um, and, and it's... And How old was I when I started working? Started working with me while well, last year you were 21, and the year before that you were 20. So the year before you were 18. Yeah, great. I've raised this man. <laughs> I've raised this man better than his own parents. And now look at him. You know, now look at what he's contributing to society: parking in disabled spots and stealing the microphone from karaoke nights. That's proper menace behaviour, and I couldn't be more proud. Um, I was 18, just got my learners when I met you. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Sorry, I just got my P's when I first met you. Now I'm off my P's. Wow. Man, two two brothers on the come up. <laughs> really leaving me in the fucking dust there. You know what? I got it. You know who texted me the other day? Um, he who texted me. Let me let me pull this up and I and I'm going to read it. Um uh, maybe shouldn't. I got this text from from this uh, from this random number. <laughs> Uh, fuck, where is it? I get so many fucking texts. Dude, is anyone else getting all of these fucking texts from these... Dear customer, we failed to deliver the package. And then it's a link that ju that's just eCellcom. We will steal your data and harvest your blood if you click this. Like, is anyone else getting, like, those fucking texts every single fucking day? Are you getting them too? Yeah. yeah. Seems like the whole country is getting them. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because we trusted the government with QR codes. Oh, scan in everywhere. Check in everywhere. Give give every single fucking business on the planet your phone number. What could happen? This. Every fucking day I get a text pretending that there's a, there's a delivery. We've delivered a severed head to your door. Click this link to return it. Fuck off. All of these fucking companies that I gave my QR code to have just given it to fucking Pajit from wherever land, and now he's texting me every day. I'm sick of it. Now I now I get actual texts from deliveries I'm actually getting, and I don't read them because I'm like, oh yeah, sure, Amazon, you're delivering my laptop, whatever. I believe you. Then I gotta go to fucking. Australia Post to pick it up. No, I'm just kidding. Amazon's great. Australia Post should be burned to the ground. Fuck that whole business. Have you ever bought something with Australia that and, and the business uses Australia Post? Some of you guys who buy stuff from me. They <laughs> suck. They don't arrive ever. And, and when they go, oh, yeah, seven to ten business days. And apparently uh, Australia Post only has one business day a month. So what that means is seven to ten months and then your fucking package will arrive. Meanwhile, Amazon, if they if you don't, if their delivery driver doesn't send their fucking package uh, to your house under 20 minutes, they get taken out the back and shot, as they should, all right? Amazon is undeniably the best uh, online platform to buy anything. Hey, do you want to buy uh, a book? We got you. Hey, would you also want to buy uh, a vibrating butt plug that'll shock you? We got those too. It's the only place where you can buy fucking everything and it will arrive in under 20 minutes. And you want to know why? You want to know why? It's because they just employ fucking anyone. Like, like literally, to become an Australia Post employee, it seems like you. the requirement is like you have to have a beard and you have to be a 50-year-old father and you have to really leisurely enjoy a stroll down the street and you have to have a nice smile. But... And that's, that's, you know, pretty narrow. Not many people are like that. Not many people have, like, good attitudes, enjoy nature, have beards and kids, and are just genuine, genuinely jolly fellows. Not everyone has that, right? But to be an Amazon worker, you need to have uh, the ability to take a few hits and, uh, and have a car, and that's kind of it. And if the car's wheels are about to fall off, no worries. Some of these cunts who rock up to my house delivering batteries, uh, it looks like they're going to die on their way to the next house. That's what they're driving, you know? They have uh, this program called Amazon Flex or something. I don't know why they called it that, because Lord knows none of those guys are flexing, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're wearing clothes that, uh, that they were wearing when they were 10 years old 20 years ago, and they still got them, because they work for Amazon Flex, and I think they get paid in beatings and cents. Uh... 
and and I and I'm saying I'm saying all I'm, I'm saying all of these things, and I'm saying how terrible Amazon is, right, to their workers and the world and the planet. But also, the other day, I ordered uh, a USB cable at 11 p.m. at night, and it arrived at 3 p.m. the next day. So what do you want me to do? Shop ethically? What, you want me to go down to a mum and pop store and support a local business? No, I can't do it anymore. If I buy something at 11 p.m. and it arrives at 3 p.m. the next day, it's over. I'm sorry. I've given up, you know? Oh, support local business. Help out you. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, pay your employees fairly. Absolutely. Oh, we should support businesses that pay tax. Yeah. Oh, we shouldn't support businesses that's that uh, union bust. Absolutely. But have you ever bought double A batteries? Like when you remembered them at fucking 10.30 p.m. and then they arrived the next morning? I have. And unfortunately, I can't stop myself. You do that, bro. You buy one thing from Amazon with Amazon Prime and you and, and you know what your brain goes? Oh. Uh. I'm never, ever supporting an Australian business ever again. And that's wrong, but that's also what it is. Keelan, right, has been resisting Amazon for many years. <laughs> Just like I did, by the way. I resisted. I said, I'm not supporting that fucking evil conglomerate. And that was the right thing to do. That was old Lewis before he sold out. But you know what? What did you buy the other day? An adapter, right? When did you buy it? I bought it on Monday night. When did it arrive? Tuesday morning. It's, uh, sorry. Sorry, it's over. Look, I try so hard. Uh, here's what I do. I'll buy anything that comes from a big business from Amazon. Like if it's like a converter or batteries or anything tech, I'm not, I'm not buying that from an Australian business because they're going to overcharge me and the money is going to some American business anyway. And also no, no small business is selling like uh, a USB cord that isn't going to light on fire, you know? <laughs> Like only JB Hi-Fi and Harvey Norman are selling charging cables. The only small business that sells charging cables are those markets. And uh, those things end up literally killing you. Remember that one chick that was that, that had it wrapped around her neck and it fucking cooked her brain and she died? And then they raided the markets here in Melbourne. It happened years ago. Yeah, there's one woman. She bought a charging cable from a market and then and it literally killed her. So I'll buy anything like that from Amazon. Uh, but anything else... I'll buy from a small business uh, and buy anything else. I mean, I'll get coffee every day from my local cafe and that's it. That's the only thing. I, that's the only shit that I buy from small businesses now is like coffee. But you, you better believe that the minute Amazon has, you can order a cappuccino on Amazon. I will be purchasing it from there. Yeah, there we go. It is believed a $4.95 phone charger sent a high voltage electrical pulse into her phone, which transferred to the earphones she had connected to a laptop. Oh my God. She got the electric chair in her own home for four ninety five. Some people would be excited by that. <laughs> that sucks. That's fucking awful. And then the police raided the market. That's uh, that's crazy. Uh, probably probably to use it on on uh, on <laughs> probably on the roof. Anyway, <laughs> sorry guys. It, well, I tried. You you listen to me try and not say it. I tried. You got to give me credit. I tried to not say that one. That's actually a very progressive joke because I'm against that shitty fucking island. Shutter Island is that what it's called? <laughs> um, look, I what was I talking about before? <laughs> before I started talking about this, none of this shit's on the board. I think it was about my birthday. Your birthday. Oh, would you get over it? I'm not going. Oh, come to my birthday. Because you fucking, you booked it on a Thursday. You're like, oh, do you want to come paintballing on a Thursday? No. I didn't book it. Well, then you didn't book it. I was like, oh, no, I can't come on Thursday. And then, and then you tell me now. Oh, by the way, now it's on Sunday. Can you come? No, I'm busy. You're not busy though. No, I'm not. But that's important. Yeah, I didn't book it. And it was the last Where are you going bowling? Uh, strike tomorrow. Too far away. Okay. Which strike? The one I'm friends <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Wait, be... Sunday night? As in tomorrow, as in Thursday. Thursday night? As in tomorrow night, yeah. I might be able to make it a Thursday night. Look, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Look, I'm not going. 
Um, <laughs> I might come. I might. Anyway, guys, find out on the Patreon episode if I go. Um, I swear I was talking about something else. Remind me in the comments. It was, it was um, driver's license. Oh, yeah, driver's license. Oh, that's right. You know, he texts me. That's right. And that, you know, let me look at who texts me. And that brings me to these, <laughs> and that brings me to these people who have been texting me, which brings me to how much I hate Australia Post. Um, all right. <laughs> Where's this? Oh, here we go. Here we go. I get this text from this random number. I don't know who this person is. Uh, crazy, like out of nowhere. Hi, Lewis. I've been watching a couple of those Dave Chappelle shows on Netflix. Chappelle spelled wrong. <laughs> and I just thought of you. You both look so similar. Because he's playing on what? If you're interested, I can do a one-hour driving lesson on Saturday. That's what I'm doing. I'm busy. Uh, it's on Sunday. It's on Sunday. Saturday. Yeah, but I'll probably be tired from the driver's lesson. You just have to pay me directly. Um, cheers. So I reckon I'll, I reckon I'll do that. I reckon I'll, I will do that. That's great. Old, uh, I haven't, I haven't seen that name for years. Um, fuck, that's great. You know I'm gonna have to start again. You know the amount of times that I've like started driving and got into a really good routine and then just being like, I reckon I'm going to not do that for 18 months. And then I, and then I get in the car and they're like, all right, key in the ignition. And I go, what's the ignition? And I've, I've just forgotten everything. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, hey man, that's probably why I can't make it on Sunday. I'll probably be on the road. I'm <laughs> just in pieces. Um, UFC was amazing. I don't normally talk about this on the podcast, uh, but but this one was so good. Have you watched any of the highlights from it? So fucking amazing. There were two Australian fighters, uh, and I have just become obsessed with this uh, this uh, guy from Western Sydney called Tai Tuivasa or Bam Bam. Uh, now, I a lot of people that listen to the show are not into UFC. I can guarantee you guys you're going to be into Tai Tuivasa, all right? This dude is probably the most entertaining fighter I've ever seen because imagine if you took a lad from Western Sydney and you just put him in the ring with the most terrifying guys on earth and that's literally what you get. This guy knocks cunts out and, and, then, and then does a shooey after every fight and screams Eshe in Joe Rogan's ear. And Joe Rogan has absolutely no idea who this guy is or, or anything about him. And every time he watches this guy fight and, and, and more importantly, every time he watches how this dude celebrates post fight, he just acts like he's watching. He acts like me when I see my dog eating cat shit. Like he's just disgusted at the, at the idea of a shoey. Um, and this dude is so like, I feel like when I'm watching him, I'm not watching the UFC. I'm watching like backyard brawls. Like this guy doesn't seem to go in with a plan. He, like his plan is to like win the fight. You know, like when you watch the UFC, it's very technical. It's very high skilled. When I watch this guy, he's like, I'm just going to punch him until he doesn't get up. Like that seems to be his plan. The past two fights I've watched of Tai Tuivasa, he has won because the other guy starts to win and then begins to capitalize it, and then Ty, something in his brain hit clicks, and goes, nah, bro, I'm not fucking losing this one, Eshay! and then knocks the other guy out. Uh, and the way that he won this fight, skip to the end, Keelan, is uh, absolutely crazy. You can watch him get hit in the head, and then he, like, wobbles, like he's about to get knocked out, and then you can just watch him go Super Saiyan in his brain, and something clicks. So he gets like tagged a bunch of times here and knocks the guy out with an elbow. And then he does the Mounty Bop, which is the Mount Druid dance. <laughs> That's the Mounty Bop. And they, after his fight, they cut the cameras away from him because there's an alcohol sponsor of the UFC who doesn't want to encourage binge drinking, which is how he celebrates his shows after, his, after he wins the fight. And he's sick. He, he has the Aboriginal flag uh, on, on the stage. It's so good. And they ask him, all of his post-match post interviews are uh, exactly what you would expect from the average uh, Southwest Sydney lad. They ask him like really like poignant questions and he goes, I don't know, bruh. I'm just here to fight. Like the guy's like, who would you like to fight next? Like your top five now. You can go for a belt. And he's like, oh, you know, fucking uh, whoever, whatever. And then he gets off stage and drinks six more beers out of six different shoes. He's like the, the I don't know. I'm in love with the guy. He's really, really great. 
Um, and even like there's been times where I've been watching interviews with a dude and they ask him like, oh, because he came from like Western Sydney and now he's like one of the best in the world in very few fights. So he's gone from like a broke guy from a broke area with like an Australian trainer to like mega top 10 elite athlete shit. And they start asking him about how his life's changed. And he literally goes, oh yeah, I started a diet like two weeks ago. Like I'm eating like an athlete <clears throat> two weeks ago. And, and they're like, oh, so what's your diet like? He goes, oh, bro, like I'm just like, I'm just trying to like drink less beer and, uh, you know, have like a diet and stuff. And they're like, okay, cool. He really is like the way that he, even the way that he talks about his own fights and he talks about the UFC, he talks like he just found out about it. Like, he's like, oh, there's like a fucking place where I can just punch on with cunts and make money and drink beer. Let's go. And then, and now, now he's talking to Joe Rogan and he's like, well, so how did you do it? He's like, yeah, Las Vegas. I don't know, man. <laughs> Speaking of Joe, he's been canceled anyway. I shouldn't, I shouldn't mention the guy. He's, he's been canceled. He's been done. You guys, uh, you guys watch his greatest hits compilation. You guys watch that? The best of album they put out. That one was, that one was crazy. I, who, who made that? So fresh. Was that them? <laughs> so, so fresh. Hottest hits N-word compilation by Joe Rogan just went absolutely top of the charts last week. Went absolutely viral. That's uh, that's not a good look, is it? it? Like, removing all of the context and everything. It's, I mean, fuck, even with the context, saying it that many times is not great. It's not good. I, I don't think he was saying it in a racist way. Although I will say, I watched it and I watched his apology and I thought his apology was great. But then in the apology, he addressed the other one that I didn't know about that I was like, oh, that one's... I was listening to his apology like, oh, yeah, I can see. Like, I can understand how, like, if you're talking about the word, it's less bad to say it because you're thinking of it anyway. As long as you're not saying it at someone or using it in, a, in the racist way. I understand, like, if you're reading a historical book or discussing the history of the word or even discussing how harmful the word is, I can understand, like, using it uh, just so that you don't have to say the N-word 60 million times if you're talking about the N-word. I, can, I understand that, and I don't, th I don't think that should be something that should ruin your life. But I also understand that, a lot of people don't like it, and I probably wouldn't do it. I think I've done it in the past, but I don't think I would do it today, talk about the word uh, and say the word. Um, and I'm listening to his apology, and he's basically, he's basically saying that. Like, he was like, oh, I thought that because I was talking about the word and I wasn't using it in a derogatory way, I could say the word without hurting people, and maybe that was wrong, and I probably wouldn't do that today. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think that's a fairly reasonable thing. And then he goes, and now I wanted to address the other, the other clip where I was talking about the movie The Planet of the Apes, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> I, went, I went, oh, no. What have you done, Joe? And then he tells this story about how he was telling this story on a podcast, and... Um, he talks about going to see the movie Planet of the Apes and then he goes, oh, we were in a black neighborhood and then I felt like I was in Planet of the Apes and I went, oh no, Joe! It doesn't look good for Joe! So yeah, that one was fucked, but also, I don't know, I just don't think that we should be destroying people's lives over this type of thing because uh, I actually heard uh, Trevor Noah say something really interesting about it. It's like... Uh, he was talking about how it's like uh, criminal reform, like uh, criminal justice reform, how like you put someone in prison, it doesn't stop them from being a criminal. What stops them from being a criminal is like rehabilitating them and bringing them back into society and giving them a positive outlet and going, you fucked up, but we're going to help you get out of this. I feel like there's an element of that with like uh, when people fuck up socially, when they say a thing they shouldn't say, or if they've hurt a bunch of people, uh, the reaction is to say fuck you and take their platform. Uh, and uh, that doesn't really stop them from doing anything. In, in fact, it almost like pushes them further into the fringe uh, and they take with them all of their fans. Um, so really the, the best thing that you can do when someone fucks up and admits they fucks up, they fucked up and apologizes for it is accept the apology because not only is that like stopping them from doing it again, or, or stopping uh, people from being hurt again, I guess. You're, it also shows all of the person who apologizes fans that it's like a lesson of like, hey, I shouldn't have done this and neither should you. 
type thing. Whereas if you just take that apology and you throw it in the bin, the guy who apologized and all of the fans go, oh, well, this wasn't even about the apology or hurting the feelings. This was about silencing me and people like me. So fuck you guys. I'll never listen to you, which I think is what is happening with Joe. Um, and, and, uh, I don't know. I just think it's a bit, I just think it's a bit silly. The whole thing. It's, it's, a uh, the, the trying to frame him as like a super right wing guy is particularly silly, especially considering in the last presidential election, he endorsed Bernie Sanders and he's had so many like left wing people. He's like, I think he really likes universal basic income. He's super pro uh, uh, health care for all. Uh, and he's very anti-war and the the amount of money the government spends on war. I think that he just uh, is a guy who probably had too many anti-vax doctors on in a row. I think that's really the problem, is that he should have had uh, opposing opinion followed by guy who disagrees with that. And I think that's what he said. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a guy with a degree who is a doctor to come on and talk about the parts of the science that they disagree with. I'm pro-vax, uh, but I want to hear scientists disagree with each other. Isn't that what science is? I thought that's what it was supposed to be. Like, a, a scientist comes and goes, this is my theory. Try and prove me wrong so I know I'm right. That's what it is. So I want to fucking see that debate happen, basically. I want to see, I want to fucking see the science. I don't want to see, I don't want to just be told oh, this is what it is. And and then when people go, oh, can we see you're working? Like, how did you get to the answer? They go, nah, it's what it is. Fuck you. And if you say we're wrong, or if you try and figure out how we figured it out, you're a conspiracy theorist and you're crazy. So I don't know. I think that's the problem. And I, I also think there's a huge element of like uh, other media outlets being very threatened and uh, probably even jealous of the amount of reach and the audience that Joe Rogan has. He's number one. He's bigger than Fox News and CNN combined. And all of these other mainstream media outlets, uh, you know, it's in their best interest to destroy their biggest competitor, especially a guy who is very anti them. So I think it's a little bit of a concerted campaign against this guy, which also coincidentally seems to be happening around the time when we would get uh, elections coming up and shit like that. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. But I'm glad the Spotify is stuck with him. That's awesome of them. Um, but also... Think of the amount of money they'd fucking lose if they got rid of him. Not just sponsorships from his show, but the amount of people that would cancel, I think would actually be astronomically high. Um, their stock completely recovered from when it took a big dip uh, after all that news came out. Uh, so I think they're like, yeah, sweet. We're making heaps of money with Joe. Uh, we might put some disclaimers there. See ya. And I think that's actually a good play. I think a lot of people are upset at Spotify. I think it's actually fucking awesome of them to just put disclaimers because it's really fucking weird to have like the press secretary uh, of the president go, oh, we think that Spotify should do more. We think this private company should do more to, to censor this guy whose opinions we dislike. It's like, I don't know if that should be happening. Like the government forcing a business to censor a guy. I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I just think it's like a, a lot of, a lot to do about, Nothing, you know, I, I feel like if the dude was racist, it would be quite clear uh, and that would be reflected in the guests that he has on the show uh, because he would only have white people. Uh, anyway, um, balls. Speaking of uh, bald things, uh, trim your balls, guys. Use use code SPEARS, 20% off and fr uh, free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. Manscaped, all right? Manscaped.com, baby. Use code SPEARS. Support the brands that support the show. Spearhead Sundays is funded entirely uh, by uh, sponsorships and your support on Patreon. So you got to support the brands uh, that support the show. This is how we keep it all running. Really great product. Um, I think, uh, can you pass me that piece of paper that's, that's magneted to the whiteboard? I just have a few thoughts that I'd like to casually say. Um, just a few thoughts I've come up with. I've actually been writing a... A lot of a lot of the sentences written in bold uh, about the lawnmower 4.0 recently, and uh, I'd like to tell you about it. <clears throat> Do not read. Host to talk about Manscaped has helped your confidence or the importance of finding a grooming routine. Uh, yeah, look, guys, this is true. Everyone feels a little bit more confident without all of that bush in the way. All right, makes you makes you look a little bit more prominent, if you know what I mean. And ladies. 
All right? This shit looks great on you. Use it. Is your girlfriend using yours? Yes. She is? You see what I mean? Does she like it? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. There we go. Ladies, get yourself a Manscaped. I reckon they should change the name and just call it Scape? That sucks, actually. Keep the name. Keep the name. Say Manscaped and then put in brackets. Chicks can use it too. Uh, that's what I think. Um, so get yourself a, a Lawnmower 4.0 because you know what, man? <clears throat> we all know how essential the... Ma- that's not all they have, apparently. We all know how essential the Manscaped TM Lawnmower Trademark 4.0 is for that price, precise trim below the waist. Their advanced skin-safe TM technology reduces cuts to your most delicate areas. But now... You can, you can enhance your perfect grooming routine with their ultra premium R. What's the R? What's the R in the circle mean? Trademark pending or something? A registered trademark, I guess. Collection. This package includes Manscaped Premium Deodorant. No, not for your balls, for your stanky armpits. This deodorant dry... Who says stanky? I don't say stanky. Uh, this deodorant dries clear. It's, it's aluminum free. Aluminium. Change it. Uh, and it's spelled the same. Al- aluminum. What do you mean? They write Americans write and say aluminum. It's aluminum and aluminium are spelled exactly the same. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. I don't think so. Google it. Google it and then apologize for being wrong. Um, hydrating body moisturizer. Do you have tattoos or issues with dry skin? It's designed to keep skin feeling clean, smooth, and smelling fresh. Body war. I lo- I'm not reading all this. Guys, Code Spears, 20% off free shipping. Uh, do it. See, it's spelled different. Oh, buy one letter. Okay. That's spelled different. Sorry. Yeah, I apologize. That's all right. I, I, I forgive you. Um, okay, dude, I've got some fucking terrible news. I was, this has really affected me negatively. It actually ruined my week. Trisha Paytas is pregnant. <laughs> and can I just say, Lord have mercy on whoever comes out of her cunt. Because that's going to be an experience. I can guarantee you uh, in about 15 years from now, we're going to see apology videos 50 minutes long apologizing to her daughter or son. Trisha Paytas is pregnant uh, and, and dear God, what is, this, what is this guy doing, this Moses guy? What's he doing? Has, does anyone have his phone number? Is he allowed to have a phone? <laughs> like what's, what's going on here? Trisha Paytas uh, celebrates her pregnancy. This is... Uh, so crazy. Oh, my God. What's that headline? Celebrity Big Brother star. is Man, and this is why media is fucking dead. If the, if whoever the fuck wrote this still thinks that everyone looks at Trisha Paytas and goes, oh, I remember her from Celebrity Big Brother, hand in your fucking journalism degree. It's over. All right? She's not known as the Celebrity Big Brother. Gee, look at that. What's going on there? That's uh, What is that photo they've decided to use of her? Although I guess that's probably the most flattering photo there is of her out there. This, um, man, this is bad. I feel like someone someone should, uh, like the authority should get involved and say, yeah, look, you can give birth, but you can't keep it. Uh, <laughs> no, I think she's going to be a wonderful mother. Um, and uh, I can't wait. To, what, can you not look up at fucking OnlyFans on the work laptop? This is, don't, don't pull up naked photos of it. I'm trying to talk about a brand new mother and the love that she's going to happen, that, that love she's going to have for her child. Oh, that's disgusting. Can, oh, yuck. Why is, every time I talk about this woman, you're pulling up fucking pictures of her pussy. I don't want to look at it. Get rid of it. What do you mean? Have I seen what? <laughs> I don't want him. I don't want to see this shit. I don't want to see the one with the toilet paper. What's the toilet paper? The, 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 she uploaded a picture of her <coughs> from behind, and there's still toilet paper on her ass. I've seen that one where she uploads like a whole picture, and she's still got dirty toilet paper attached to it. That's so. I mean, you know what? She's great. I think she's going to be a wonderful mother. I think, and I think that level of attention to detail is really going to shine in, in her parenting. That's <laughs> so good. Okay, can we get rid of this woman? I'm never going to talk about her again if every time I fucking bring her up, you start pulling up photos of her fucking pornography. This is, you know, it's like her and Nikocado Avocado. Every time I talk about them, there's whole pics on my fucking monitor. You know, that's 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 the work laptop that Rosie uses every day. She's going to look at the history and go, I wonder what the boys talked about. <clears throat> um, man, Prince Andrew uh, settled his lawsuit. 
with uh, with the it's a civil case though, right? How's this? I, I believe it's a twenty four million dollar uh, civil suit. Uh, twenty four million dollars he has to pay this woman. It's a settlement, which is basically them going, yeah, all right, maybe we shouldn't complete this trial, or I'll get in trouble. Uh, and that money is being uh, paid by him and the queen. What? So uh, you know, so so you know what? Our our tax dollars have paid for the royal family to fuck kids. It's great. Get her off the dollar. Get this old bitch off my five dollar note. She's paying pedos to pay their victims. It's so fucked. This is so good. The royal family is just chipping in. Hear that, everyone from the UK? That's where your tax money goes. Everyone who's upset at me for the Prince Philip joke, guess who, Guess where your tax money's going? Straight into victims' pockets. Paying them off so they don't fucking get in trouble by act, the actual law. Settlement details unknown, but likely worth millions of dollars. Okay, maybe I made that up. Um, I, I read somewhere that uh, it'll be paid for uh, partly by the Queen. That's so lit. That's awesome. Um, so maybe, th- but maybe this is like one step closer to putting him in prison. I don't know. This whole shit, like the, the Epstein thing is a little bit crazy because, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, she might get a mistrial and she is kind of deserving of a mistrial. Um, because from what I've read, right. Uh, one of the jurors lied about their having experience with, uh, sex abuse themselves, which would make them a very biased member of the jury. So I think they're filing for a mistrial. And I mean, uh, they're probably going to get it because that's uh, fair, which really sucks. <laughs> really, really shit of the jury member to lie about that because it, I mean, it does, you know, it does kind of fuck the results of the trial. That sucks. So maybe now. Although, you know what? Maybe it is a good thing because that'll put it back in the news and there'll be more evidence presented. So maybe it puts it back in the news cycle and it gets more people in trouble. Maybe it overall will actually be a good thing. I'm saying that, but fucking six months from now, she'll be walking free at back, back at in and out taking pics. Um, Kanye West has, has gone nuts too. This, this Kanye West stuff is, uh, is crazy. Are you across all this stuff, Keelan? It's hard to keep up with because uh, a lot of the Kanye shit, he keeps putting stuff out there and then deleting it. And what I think is 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 what say, what says a lot about um, about us and, and like the power of the internet and the power of celebrity and fame is is when when Kanye like threatens the current partner of his ex, it's really funny and everyone gets excited for his album. When I do it it violates my restraining order, you know? Like, what the guy's doing is literally, like, abusive uh, relationship shit. He's, like, sending flowers to the woman's house in a truck on Valentine's Day when she's with someone else and doesn't want anything to do with him. He's posting repeatedly a bunch of uh, threats and images that include, like, headlocks and then tagging her... Like he posted this video of like some some black guy choking out another black guy, and then he tags Kim Kardashian as the person getting choked out, and everyone's like, "Woo! The, the album's gonna be good." This dude's like harassing this woman uh, and her current partner, and like if anyone else d- would be do- d- did that, it'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's like abusive, controlling, manipulative partner stuff." But because Kanye's doing it, it's like, man, remember fucking college dropout though? How good was that? It's uh, very funny. If I was Pete Davidson right now, I would just turn my phone off, I reckon. And uh, I would, I, if I was him, I would turn my phone off and then once a week I would, I would get a friend to call me and tell me what I've missed. Did you see the, the text exchange between Kim and Kanye where she's like, please stop this, you're going to get Pete hurt? Yeah. <laughs> Correction, don't hurt Skeet. Skeet. Don't hurt Skeet Davidson. I'm going to handle this myself. Yeah, right. Which is not like not a threat, you know? <laughs> like that doesn't make it better. Guys, guys, don't kill my current, my ex's current boyfriend. I'll kill him myself, all right? That, that should make things a little bit better. Um, I think the worst part of all of this is how ugly the memes are. Whoever is Photoshopping this stuff, it's, it's absolutely got to be Kanye on doing it on his own phone. Like, he's not doing it on a laptop. He's doing it on his phone, 
like in between private jet trips to to various different cultish church things. Uh, I don't know. And now there's only one post up there. That this is what it is. I feel like every couple of hours, I'll check Kanye's Instagram, and like right now, it's looking really nice. But two two weeks later, or two hours later, it looks like the the Joker is running it. You know, like posting about we live in a society and how the media is trying to destroy the world. But I do, I do actually agree with him about the kids on TikTok thing. I don't think his kids should be on TikTok. But also, like, what the fuck did you expect? Like, you married into that. Like, oh no, Kim Kardashian is turning my daughter into a mini version of her, just like every single other fucking member of that family. That's what they do. That's what you married into. That's, that'd be like Kim Kardashian complaining about a truckload of roses on her door and threats to her bo- current partner. Like, you married, that's, you chose that. You've seen it. It's, we've all seen it. We all know. It's very public. Like, you guys chose that chaos uh, and you have to, like, live with it, I guess. You can't see what someone's doing and then be like, ah, oh, I can change them. I don't, I don't think you can. I think that's what you get. Um but yeah, I don't think t- kids that young should be on TikTok. But I also feel like much more damage is being done to your children by threatening your wife and their current partner and trying to break into their house and putting all of that shit public on social media. I feel like that's a lot more damaging than them uploading a few TikToks. I don't know. But again, you know, why am I trying to reason with Kanye West, who is a listener of the show? And we're very grateful to have him. Um. I want to say one other thing about this Kanye West stuff. I can't uh, remember, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that. Uh, oh yeah, the current his current girlfriend, or his ex girlfriend. That's another weird thing about this is he went public with a new person first, right? He went public with a new person first, and then and then got really upset uh, about it. Have you heard uh, the the clip from an interview? With Julia Fox on the Call 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 Her Daddy podcast, um, really, really great. So this relationship lasted a month, right? And Julia Fox is a beautiful woman, uh, and basically, I think Julia Fox for Kanye was like a, a little dress-up doll. He was like, "Oh, she's really pretty. I'm going to dress her in my clothes, make her famous." And then I and I don't think they had a conversation. Um, because I, I just don't see how you could have a conversation with her and go, oh, I would like to spend more than 10 minutes with you. I, I never, I, just like everyone else, right? This Julia Fox woman comes out of nowhere. We're like, who's this woman? Never heard of her. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, they seem happy. Oh, she's wearing these clothes. Really cool. I should find out more about her. And then we listen to this. like weird thing. You know, it's, it's yeah, I think I mean, it's, it's better yourself yay's muse. Yeah, a little, maybe. What is a muse? I mean, I was Josh Safdie's muse when he wrote Uncut Jams. Right. Do you know what I mean? Uncut Jams. I was John Safdie's muse when he wrote Uncut Jams. Uncut Jams. She's saying Uncut Gems. Uncut Jams. Sounds like she's saying Uncle Jims. I'm going down to Uncut Jams' house. Uncut Jams. Liter- literally sounds like Timmy from South Park. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I was John Safdie's muse when I was Timmy. Uncle Jam. So I feel like he must have had one conversation with her and was like, oh yeah, this 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 is horrible and horrific. I'm leaving. I'm gonna I'm gonna win Kim Kardashian back by threatening her current partner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Pete Davidson's such a such an interesting person because he, he really is just fame much way more famous for who he fucks than what he does. Which is pretty rare. Most usually it's women that are that are that, you know. But now it's him. So I think he's a fucking king, and uh, keep on doing it. Speaking of kings, right? This is my this is my one of my favorite stories I've seen all year. Uh, the guy from Russia on his first day as a security guard in a museum, he gets out a pen and he draws eyes on a million dollar painting. That is objectively fucking awesome. And the guy should lose his job, but he should also get a crown. You know? Day one, first day, he was like, you know what? I'm going to draw a face on the million dollar painting on my first day. Firstly, why is he around the million dollar painting on his first day? Maybe we should ask ourselves that. You know? Maybe start him on something small. Hey, guard the wet floor sign. 
get a feel for it. Make sure no one slips. Then you can you can maybe stand next to the Picasso. So they, they fired him, but then they didn't say like three or four months of the, what happened, and then they never announced his name, like released his name because they're too scared of what could potentially happen. To him. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I, I, and, and you know what's what's such a shame is that he actually made the painting look a lot better. <laughs> like it looks really good. Like they didn't they didn't have eyes before and they look strange, but with the eyes on them, I reckon they look good, right? And this is why, you know, this is why NFTs are the future. You can't draw eyes on a, on, on an NFT, can you? You know? I think that's I think that's just absolute fucking legend behavior. And what's really funny is he they're they're good eyes. They're in the right spot. Like it looks like he did it well. Like it wasn't like he checked around his shoulder and did it in 30 seconds. It's like he was guarding them for hours and it really pissed him off that they didn't have eyes. So he's like, you know what, fuck this. I'm gonna finish the painting. I'm gonna finish it. He used a ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen. <laughs> that's so good. So are those paintings just fucked now or are they going to try and restore them? They're going to restore them, but the ink has actually uh, soaked through the varnish that they put over the top so the paintings don't get damaged. <laughs> so they're, they're fucked. So they'll be able to fix it, but you'll be able to kind of tell. Yeah, I think they should leave it. I reckon they should, I reckon they should leave it and they should, and they should do a, I reckon you should do a print of them and sell them. Yeah. They definitely should have left them up because people would go see it. People would pay to go see that. Yeah, but that would encourage other people to do it. Yeah. It would. Yeah. But I man, I don't know why the fuck they even display the real things anymore. Like like I feel like the like trusting us is done. I don't know why they're trusting us anymore. Like, hey, come and see the actual fucking Mona Lisa. Let's not do that. I've I every time I see pictures of, of people looking at the Mona Lisa, I'm like when is when is one fucking legend going to put his hand through it? Like I, I think, that's funny. Someone putting their hand through the Mona Lisa. That's funny. You'll be remembered forever. That's funny. If someone just goes in and everyone's just taking photos, and someone just goes, "Hey guys, hey look at this. What did the five fingers say to Mona Lisa? Slap." Put their hand through it. That's funny. I'm not saying do it. I'm saying I would laugh. You'd be remembered. You would go down in history as the guy who put his hand through the Mona Lisa. That's really funny. Don't do it. I just, th- I just think you shouldn't trust us anymore with anything. You can't. The amount, the amount of shit that I've fucking seen because it was funny to do, despite how disrespectful it is, is, is it's. I just know that one of these days someone's putting their fist through the Sistine Chapel. You know. Like someone's going to bring a ladder in there and, and it'll be your fault. Replace the roof with a photo. That's what I, that's what I think. Turn it into an NFT. That's the only way you can trust us. <laughs> um, all right. I think I'm going to end it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you uh, would like to submit an email to Miscellaneous Bit at the End, I do need your emails. Uh, send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. That is podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, and uh, you will uh, make the show. If you need some life advice, if you have a story to tell me, if you have a question, I would love to see it. If you have an interesting news article you would like me to re- discuss or something funny uh, that you can see, send it to podcast at loosebeers.com and I'll uh, answer it next week. All right. Thank you very much for uh, listening and I hope you have a shit one. Goodbye. Oh, that's right. Also, come see me live, loosebeers.com, Melbourne. Heaps of shows. I also need to plug at the start. No, that's right. It sounded like I was done. Um, hey, before we get into it, loosebeers.com, Melbourne. My comedy festival shows are on sale now. I'm doing Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. It's going to be really great. Come and see me March and April. The comedy festival is only six shows. I want to see you there. Get your tickets now, loosebeers.com. We've got Afterpay available as well for those people who want to split it up. Uh, it's going to be sick, straight out of Frankston. Uh, yeah, get your tickets now, loosebeers.com. I'll see you there.